Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of this video, we are talking about marketing for your photography business. So we're going to give you one quick and simple trick that you can apply to your images and to your website that's going to help you with your SEO and ranking better in Google search. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, so this video marks the very first of our new series that I'm starting on marketing your photography business. So every day for the next 30 or so days, we'll see how long we go, I'm going to give you a tip, a trick, a strategy that you can apply to your photography business to work on your marketing, to work on your branding, and to work on building your business. Because honestly, from all of the photographers I've talked to, the number one kind of tricky part about building a photography business is not really taking photos. It's more in getting a portfolio first and second, getting clients who actually want to hire you. So when we can actually do that, we're in a good place, right? So no matter whether you're in the midst of an off season right now or you're just getting started in photography and you maybe want to start building up a business, this is going to be a great series for you to follow. Make sure to check it out every day. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up and we will get into it and give you some simple actionable tools and steps you can take day by day by day that are going to help you in the long run and build your business. Are you ready? Okay, so I've given you that explanation. With that out of the way, today's topic is on SEO in the form of alt tags and titles for your images. So I have my website pulled up over here. This is the back end and I'm making a new post because I have not yet uploaded my 2019 weddings onto the website. I know I'm really behind here and I guess the first tip is if you haven't done that, you're like me, make sure you go ahead and just do that today. Update your website, keep your content fresh and that's going to really help both for SEO and for people who visit your website. The last thing someone wants when they're considering hiring you for their wedding is to see that you haven't done a wedding since 2015. That doesn't instill a spirit of confidence. But that's not the tip, that's just a freebie for you. We're going to be talking about actually inserting images into your posts and to your website. So this is a wedding that took place at Gatsky Orchards in Oyama, British Columbia, Canada, and I'm going to post it to my website. And normally when photographers post their images, they'll do something like this. They'll go into Lightroom. Obviously I'm not in Lightroom right now, but let's say that I was going to upload one of these images like this. I'd grab my images and I would export them or I'd save them or I'd screenshot, whatever it is, and I'd go over to my post I'd insert my images and be done. Maybe I'd write some text, I'd do something like that. But what most photographers miss out on, and most business people to begin with, is they don't really understand how important this little thing is right here. So when you upload photos to your website, whether you're using WordPress or Squarespace, it doesn't matter. The title of that image is what tells Google what this image is all about. So remember, while you might be able to look at something and see exactly what that photo is taken of, Google doesn't know that. They just see a bunch of ones and zeros, and then they look at the text in your title and in the alt text, which I'll explain in a second here, to determine what is in that shot. And then it looks at that text and says, okay, is this relevant to the person who is searching for something around this topic? So for example, we have this photo right here, and it's just a random number screenshot. And you might be exporting your photos from Lightroom just like this with maybe a date, maybe the couple's name. So it might be Brienne, that's a bad spelling of Brienne, and Dave's wedding, September 2019, right? And so that's great. We know that it's Brienne and Dave's wedding, but Google doesn't really care and neither do your brides. So when you actually title your photos, the number one tip I can give you is title them based around what you think brides will be searching for in your area that have to do with kind of the topic of that photo. So this wedding took place at a place called Gatsky Orchards. So I'm actually going to retitle my photo. Gatsky Orchard Bohemian Wedding Oyama, BC, Canada. Right, and you could even add the region. It's in the Okanagan. And then we could even do a romantic at the front. So now instead of it just being a series of random numbers or a couple's name, it's Romantic Gatsky Orchard Wedding in Oyama, BC, Okanagan, Canada. So what's happening is when Google is actually looking at this photo, they know it's around these topics. That's kind of what's going on inside of the photo. And so Google might rank this photo and show up in search when someone searches for Gatsky Orchard Wedding or if someone searches for Bohemian Wedding Okanagan, right? So all of these different kind of combinations 
could possibly show up in search. Whereas before, if you just had Dave and Brianne's wedding, well, it's very unlikely that anybody is going to go into Google, search for Dave and Brianne's wedding, and happen to click on this and then book you for photography, right? So my number one tip for you today is to go through your old blog posts, your old media, and if you're using WordPress, it's simply a matter of you go into a post, hit add media, and then you can access all of the files that you've inserted into different posts. You don't have to actually go to those posts and edit them. You just go over to this kind of media browser. You can click on the image and just update it. So you can see that this one has been optimized. It says Thompson a River University Wedding. And then I have kind of the locations in that university. And then at the very end, I insert my website URL as well. So that when I show up in Google search, let's just see, out of curiosity, Thompson a River University Wedding. When I go over to the images results, you can see my images are actually the top oh, one, two, three, four, five, five images are all from my website. So that really helps. And then when people click this, they see the description based on the actual name of the photo and then a link to my website. So that's g great for SEO because what's going to happen is when a bride is considering hiring you or if you're not a wedding photographer, this still applies if they're looking at a location. So let's say I was looking for a family photographer in Cincinnati. I might put in Cincinnati. I don't really know how to spell Cincinnati because I've never been there. Cincinnati family photos. And you know, people just sort of insta stock and they look at Google images, all that kind of stuff. And they'll look for these kind of photos and get an idea. They might say, oh, I really love this edit. And they find out that this was by this particular Heather Elizabeth Studios. They click on that, head to your website, and next thing you know, you have a booking. Whereas if you just put Dave and Becky photo or 013456 JPEG, that's not going to do anything for your SEO. So make sure you are retitling all of your images and your task for today to move your SEO forward and your branding forward is to go into your images, all of the old ones, and it's going to take some time, but you just go in and you retitle them surrounding kind of those keywords that target the locations of your potential customers. Okay, so that's the easiest thing you can do. Now, what is alt text? Alt text, which is short for alternative sources text, is actually meant to describe what an image is about for people who are either visually impaired or for Google search engines, things that can't actually read text or when your website isn't loading images properly. So if you ever go to a website and the image isn't loading properly, it will display by default the alt text for that image to describe what should be showing up there but just isn't able to load for whatever reason. So that's kind of the technical definition of what alt text is, but really what it comes down to is just, it's another place that you can describe what is going on in this photo. Now I should also say that if you don't have this option, if you're using Squarespace or Wix or something and it doesn't have the option to insert alt text, you don't need to worry about it. It's really important to do the title tags and have a description of your keywords in the title. The alt text is kind of an optional thing that you can just add an additional description if you happen to have that option. As for the caption and the description, these really don't affect SEO in any major way. If you enter a caption, it will show up under the image in your actual post, whereas the alt text and the title of the image don't show up in your post at all. They're hidden and only seen in the code of your website. So the title might be Thompson River University Wedding, and then I just insert other keywords into the alt text. and. You don't want to just keyword stuff, and that means just putting in all sorts of things that have nothing to do with the photo. You want to make sure that the description lines up with what is going on inside of the photo. So for example, this could be a Thompson River University uh, wedding photo shoot, and that would be an accurate description of what's going on in this, fo this photo. What wouldn't be accurate is Thompson River University wedding reception. You might actually get dinged by Google if they kind of notice their algorithms are getting smarter and smarter, that this doesn't seem to line up with what that photo is describing. Or if you have a very, very, very long title with, you know, 50 different possible keywords, that's also probably not going to be a good thing in the eyes of Google. Keep it limited to just a couple major keywords that people might be searching for surrounding your style of photography and your location and leave it at that. And then put in a couple extras in the alt text. So you can see here I have Kamloops wedding ceremony and wedding photo shoot at horticultural gardens in Thompson River University. Oh, and there I just did an alternative. So alternative text, we put an alternative to Thompson River University is just TRU. And then I put Thompson River as well. So that's what you can go and do. It's actually pretty simple. And it's especially helpful if you do this inside of Lightroom. So when you're exporting your photos in Lightroom, you can just rename them. And what I'll typically do is most of the time the session will start with the same kind of title at the beginning of every single thing. So let's go down here. These are all old photos, so I don't know exactly if they're optimized or not. Now you can see this one isn't optimized at all. It says, I am dark, I'm lovely styled shoot. So that's not going to rank for anything. I could rename it to perhaps 
Kelowna dark and moody wedding styled shoot at and then put the venue name. And so what I would do in Lightroom or in WordPress is you just copy that, Command C, and then paste it over here for all of the photos from this shoot. And then what I'll do at the end is I'll add individual details. So this one might be dark and moody place settings. Or I could do that in the alt text as well. So I could go through and give them all kind of the same title. And then the alt text could be a description of what's going on specifically in that photo. So this could be place settings for wedding, purple, and gold. So I hope this makes sense. I don't want to belabor the point too, too much. I want to keep this pretty short and simple. And I hope you understand the value of this because honestly, it's going to make such a huge difference. And of course, you're going to apply the same thing to Facebook and to Insta Instagram and to Pinterest. The more kind of keywords that your potential customers are searching for that you can include in the image title and in the description if you're on social media that you're using, the better. So this applies to Facebook, it applies to Pinterest, it applies to everything, but especially to your website because I find most photographers, or a large portion of them, are not really aware of this and not taking full advantage of what it can do for your website and for your SEO. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date. Again, I'm going to try and post a marketing tip for you every single day for the next 30 days so you can come along with me, take this, apply, and set aside maybe 30 minutes a day just to work on your website, work on your SEO, work on your marketing. And I promise you at the end of 30 days, you'll look back and say, this was so, so worth it. I've seen so much progress. And that's what I'm really hoping for for you in the midst of this season we're going through together is that you will see progress in your business despite where you might be right now. Okay, so leave your questions below or comments or suggestions. Do you have other techniques that you use? I'd love to hear about them. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Peace.